really thought I could get through this without crying. 27% of American adults have cut contact with a family member, lasting an average 4.5 years. I never dreamed I'd be part of that statistic. Have you seen this? Dear parents, I need to speak my truth. All I my life, I've been angry no at last July about what I had to say. I need so you to know so how your feelings have been spoiled. And it's bad. I have my life ruined because of you. 90% of the letter was about politics and how we couldn't be in our life if we supported that guy. This kind of angry outburst from her was so out of character, we were shocked. We just didn't know what to do. I mean, I thought I was a good mom. Not perfect, but pretty good. Honestly, I was in denial at this point because I thought this was more a thing between her and my husband, Ted because I'm not that political at all. So I thought we could still have a relationship. So one day I responded positively to one of her Facebook posts, like normal, thinking that the letter was just some one-off thing that would blow over. But she unfriended me and followed up with a text that said something like, you don't get to stay in my life. I'm keeping this number for family emergencies only. Don't contact me. Ted's sister got involved to see if she could help, but Haley immediately unfriended her, which was surprising because the two of them were politically aligned. Friends offered to step in and say something on our behalf, but after what happened to Ted's sister, we just said no. A couple weeks later, she did not wish me happy birthday for the very first time. I didn't even... This wound was so fresh, I couldn't even say her name when I talked about it. I've even had some people really close to me decide to move on from me. And that's, that's the hardest of all. In November, I texted her that we were going to Montana to see her sister for Thanksgiving and that she was warmly invited, but if we didn't hear back, we'd assume she wasn't interested. Silence. In December, I texted Merry Christmas and told her that we loved her. Silence. So that winter, I emailed her a few times, mostly personal development stuff that I thought she'd be interested in. More silence. Around this time, I started watching videos on estrangement to see if I could figure out what was going on. I did it intermittently because I think I was still in denial, thinking she would just come back in time. And it seemed appropriate to reach out occasionally to let her know I loved her because that's what moms are supposed to do, right? I mean, I try to maintain contact. She, uh, she shut that down. The longer this went on, the more real it began to feel. And there was just this cauldron of emotions, horrible emotions, shock and shame, anger, denial, sadness, depression, betrayal. It was so hard to process. I joined some parental estrangement groups on Facebook to see how other parents were coping. And while it was nice to know that I wasn't alone, I could not spend too much time there because it was all the same misery that I felt. So horribly sad and depressing. There were just broken hearts everywhere. I could not face all that pain. Sadly, at one point, I had to text her to let her know Grandpa died, Ted's dad. She'd had a good relationship with him. I was very matter-of-fact about it. He died. There's a memorial. Here's the Zoom link. This was still during COVID. She did attend to her credit. We were glad to see her there, although we didn't see her there. She didn't have her camera on and she didn't say anything. She was there. I sent her a text wishing her happy birthday and telling her I loved her. Silence. I was so sad on her birthday. This is a very special day for me too. It's the day I first became a mother. I guess that's my way of saying I still love you, I still think about you, but I don't want to intrude in your space. And instead of buying her a present for her birthday every year, Sounds stupid, but I buy myself a present for Haley's birthday every year. It's like 
a consolation prize. Mother's Day 2021 also passed in silence for the very first time. By now, I had moved from shock and shame into feeling this kind of low-level anger, definitely resentment, and yeah, betrayal. My husband may have texted her once or twice that summer, but I did not. On the one year anniversary of her angry letter, I emailed my sad letter response. I started off with a story about the time I saved her from choking to death on a candy wrapper when she was a baby, which was probably the worst way to start, but I didn't know. Then I went into the, I don't know everything, but I did the best I could reasoning. Then I went on to calmly address some of the points in her letter. I apologized for not being the parent she needed, but I also expressed dismay at her level of intolerance, which I probably shouldn't have done, but I wanted to be honest and basically just wished her the best of everything in life. My birthday passed in silence once again which is sad because she was the one who always remembered everybody's birthdays in the family, even my dad's, who she hardly knew. Around this time, we discovered her TikTok, which I have to confess was strange and difficult to digest because she does a lot of exotic cosplay. And I couldn't help myself. I binge watched a bunch of them, then combed through all the comments looking for any mention of us. I was pretty annoyed at being relegated to the status of random internet viewer, but I was glad that I could see her. In November, my husband and I caught the super nasty Delta version of COVID. It was truly awful for me, but way, way worse for Ted. We're talking hospitals, paramedics. It got so bad, I texted her. I told her that she should call Daddy-O because he had COVID and he wasn't doing well at all. He was really struggling and it was scary. She did call, which was a miracle, but apparently she was almost like an automaton, dead inside, I don't know, kind of like a robot. I mean, Ted really appreciated the call, don't get me wrong, really appreciated that call, it meant so much to him, but it was also like she wasn't all there. It was very strange. Ted texted her after he recovered to thank her for calling, but she didn't respond. My dad died on Christmas Day, but I didn't bother to tell Haley because she didn't really know him. He was a sweet guy, but kind of an odd duck living in his own world. But he was my dad, and it was really hard to watch him die. And the one gift that you get out of that, typically, is that it makes you realize how short and precious life is. And I'm older. I'm in my 50s. I mean, mortality is, is right there. When you're a kid, you look at your parents like this big, all-knowing people. And then when you get to be an adult, you realize, oh my god, they're flawed. And there's a breakaway period where you break away, and you're like, get away from me. And then... Usually there's a period where they come back and hopefully they will at some point, but just in case they don't, they'll have some videos to watch about who was mom and what did she worry about and what did she think about and I don't know, maybe nobody cares. So I was grieving for dad that winter, but also for Haley, who didn't seem to care. I texted her happy birthday and told her that I loved her which was my only attempt at contact that entire year. Silence. So of course I had to peek at TikTok. I read all her birthday comments and she seemed to have a lot of fans sending her presents. We have been replaced by fans. I ordered Joshua Coleman's book, Rules of Estrangement, scanned a couple of chapters out of order, including the amends letter section, which I could not stomach because it required far too much contrition. Like, it's all the parents' fault. We had no contact. I threw myself into a new YouTube channel and took a month-long camping trip around the U.S. After my dad dying and losing Haley, I just needed to get out and start living my own dreams now before it's too late. 
I brought the Coleman book with me on this adventure, but I didn't read it. I was still low-level bitter and resentful over being ghosted. On my birthday, which passed again in silence, I went for a hike. And two years later, she's still not talking to me. Can't make her love me. I can't make her want to talk to me. I can't make her call. I can't make her do anything. So I'm just trying to cope. I never in a million years imagined that I would have a daughter who would just cut me out of her life. We did the best we could. We poured a lot of love and resources and time and energy and she rejected me and it's hard not to hold a grudge. Admitting that I was angry and holding a grudge was really hard because that's not who I am. I binged on our TikTok again and found some references to us, including a video dedicated to what she'd learned going no contact with her parents. I sat down with Ted and we watched together. You know, I think the thing that um, I guess irks me, that whole love with strings attached thing, I just, I don't get that. I don't know where that comes from. I don't want to I be mean, with people like that. Love is... They love you for who you are, not for who they want you to be. She was tactful, but the comments supporting her decision to dump us were really hard to take. We also learned that she's been diagnosed with ADHD and high-functioning autism, which was news to us. You know, maybe that explains some of her behavior. We never knew. If we had seen it, we would have taken her to doctors, but we didn't see it. She seemed like a normal kid to us. She doesn't even care if how we feel. She doesn't care if we're struggling with this issue. She doesn't care if we're alive or dead. I mean, she doesn't really know. I don't hear any, I'm really sorry. There's nothing there. There's just, I had a mental problem, sorry. She didn't care. She doesn't care still. I'm sorry, I'm just very upset. I really thought we did our best. Throughout this whole ordeal, I've continued my daily meditation practice. And afterwards, I usually spend a few minutes reading from some inspirational book. At one point, I was reading about living a compassionate life. And when I got to the chapter on forgiveness, <laughs> wow. Lately, I've been thinking about forgiveness. Forgiving her, but forgiveness for myself. Ted, but mostly myself, because you can't help but blame yourself when something like this happens with a child that you raised and poured all your love and energy and everything, you know, we just gave her the best of everything we could. Letting go of our anger is a way of being compassionate towards ourselves. Anger keeps us stuck in the past, obsessing over what has already happened. Forgiveness does not ignore the harm or justify a person's misdeeds, but it releases the pain and anger connected to them. I debated texting happy birthday but did not. Today is my daughter's birthday. She is 29 and she hasn't spoken with us for two and a half years now. And that has been very difficult to deal with, <sighs> but I'm learning to accept it because that's all I can do. Uh, the last text I sent was happy birthday last year. So she is lost to us now at this point. And this was not something we ever, ever envisioned for our lives. Oh God, I'm going to cry. I thought I was going to make it through this without crying. But <laughs> I can't. <sighs> Thank you.
it's like she's dead, but she's not. And I'm grateful that she's not. And I am grateful that she's on social media somewhere. If I feel the need to go see her, I can see her. So happy birthday, Haley. I wish you all the best in what you're doing. I admire that you're following your dreams and you're doing what you believe is right. And I hope you are loved and surrounded by people who truly love you, not for some persona that you may be online, but for who you truly are as a person. And I know you're a kind soul with a really big heart with so much love to give. And so I hope you find a place to express that love and find someone, someone's who appreciate that love and reflect it back to you. I wish you health and happiness. Just live your best life. Do good in the world. Just know that I still love you, no matter what you say or don't say about me. You can't change that. I will fucking love you forever, like it or not. Because <laughs> I'm a mom. And moms are like that.